Gopala Astrology Channel where the science meets astrology for common man's understanding. Subscribe and stay tuned to this channel for continued astrological updates. Hello, welcome to Gopala Astrology Channel once again ladies and gentlemen. Today is Sunday, we have a session with uh, Mr. Arun Biramani from Mumbai and Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. So, how are you? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Very good. So, how was your uh, last week? Oh, wonderful. Oh. Great. And uh, we are continuing our session now for the second time. Certainly. So, we, are, we had completed uh, the horoscope of the husband. And you had, uh, probably you are going to give me the data for the spouse, is it today? Yeah. Excellent, excellent. So we will try to cover that portion and we will try to analyze uh, how is the understanding between the husband and the spouse and how to interpret the planet XYZ and also the outer planets, namely the Uranus, Neptune, Pluto as actually explained and um, uh, really well manifested by uh, Greenstone Logoji, right? So we are going to do that and let me share my screen. Uh, please let me know if you are able to clearly see the screen. All right, sir. I did some work myself too, some observations and some yes, risks. I mean, I'll share it with you as we go along. Beautiful, sir. Please. I will be more glad to uh, uh, do that uh, and take the inputs from you. So I'm going to share my screen now. All right. So this is my screen and let us go to the website www.greenstonelogo.com. So I always like to do this as an open case study because many of our friends have been commenting in our YouTube videos that they do not know how to go and create this horoscope page, right? So that's why I, I made a separate video as well today. So let's do this. So please tell me the date of birth details of the spouse. I'm going to just put spouse. It's just a random thing for me. Let's not put any names here. And uh, please tell me what is the date of birth, sir? You have that, you can read it out. 1st October, 1956. 1956, wow. This is also a, a, an eagle avatar of Pluto. <laughs> now it has become by heart for me because I'm seeing so many horoscopes and we know where the Pluto is there for people. Beautiful, what is the time, sir? Time is 13.25. In the afternoon. So, 1 o'clock and uh, 25 minutes, is it? I'm going to put yeah. 25 here. And let's ignore 00 is good enough. Seconds, we are not worried much. And then she's born in India. Yes, India. And, and city is Mumbai. Mumbai. Beautiful. So, I'm going to put Mumbai here. And say continue, I'm going to get uh, Mumbai Maharashtra. This is correct. Latitude, longitude also it shows in the website. And let's click OK. So you have a beautiful color coded chart for free of cost from uh, Mr. Greenstone Lobo. Beautiful. So I'm going to take a quick screenshot of this one so that um, I, can, I can just write something, put the arrow marks and things like that to show the, uh, the drishti and the other things. Okay, so with the name of Krishna, let's start uh, with the grace of the Lord. Let's start analyzing this chart. Okay, so now this person is born <coughs> in Danas Lagnam. That means in English it is Sagittarius. This is the house number one. Okay, now the ascendant Sagittarius is ruled by who? By Jupiter. Okay, let's see where is Jupiter for this person. It goes to the ninth house, which is a beautiful thing to see. Now, uh, I'm not getting the... Ah, okay, I have to get in... Ah, okay, this is the ninth house. So, Jupiter is in the ninth house of Simharashi or the Leo, right? So, it goes to the fall house in the ninth house because Jupiter, according to Greeny, is not, uh, is not going to do very well in the zodiac sign of leo but the based on the vedic astrology concepts ninth house from lagna or the ascendant is a very important house okay so when whenever the benevolent planet like jupiter goes there 
this person's um, belief system towards the higher consciousness will be very very strong <coughs> okay and that's why whenever we study the horoscope we should see the strength of the ascendant lord okay so ascendant lord sitting in the ninth house always do very important aspects it always sees fifth house from itself it also sees the ninth house from itself and of course common factor is seventh house so wherever the planet jupiter sits it always aspects the lagna for this person because it's the fifth aspect this is a very very good aspect somehow or the other the the health of this person will be protected by this jupiter even if it is red as i told you in my previous videos we should not take debilitation planet as a very bad planet it's only going to give 50% of the result that's all and that happens in the second half of the life and definitely this person is very lucky to have jupiter in the ninth house and it is going to give her the protection of her own body that is the lagna right so jupiter's uh, drishti is always good but the placement of jupiter is going to be a little bit problematic for the first 28 years what is that uh, meaning i am going to explain to you see jupiter should be taken like a candle you know what happens in the case of a candle the candle starts burning okay it keeps the below part of the uh, of the candle very warm and it's going to burn continuously but whereas it emits light to the entire room correct that's why we say in tamil guru parvai guru parvai irunda ellame rajayogam that means whenever there is a benevolent drishti or guru parvai we are going to have the person's life very smooth and easy okay irrespective of other planets we will come to that one by one but uh, jupiter in the ninth house is considered really good for this person and according to classical astrology even jupiter and surya surya is the ruler of leo in classical astrology they say that they are best friends okay now we have a lot of new knowledge that is coming into us and we understand with lot of lot of research work uh, that jupiter in leo is really not going to perform well that that should be kept in mind so with amalgamation of both the knowledge i can say she, this person is going to be a very pious woman because she is having what is known as gaja kesari yoga right moon and jupiter are in the same house let us look at the angle in which the moon is there the moon is at 6 degrees and jupiter is at 24 degrees of course there is a gap there um of about 18 degrees or 17 and 1/2 degrees whatever it is but still the gaja kesari yoga happens in the ninth house of bhagyasthanam okay uh, if i am sounding too uh, technical for you please stop me and uh, i know that i use lot of uh, vedic astrology words for you uh, if you don't understand you are uh, uh, most welcome to stop me and ask the question i hope you must have heard what is known as gaja kesari yoga so i have actually made a video about it it says that uh, whenever moon comes in close connection with jupiter the person will be very honest and benevolent and truthful okay they may work very hard in life and then um, uh, they will have the fruit of that result as well they will live in a beautiful house they will get some vehicle comforts there will be always um, uh, some kind of a positive things happening in their lives all the time that's what we have to say but uh, unfortunately jupiter goes to red in um, in the zodiac sign we will analyze that now so when uh, whenever the lagna lord goes and falls into a debilitation house according to greenstone logo what should we say the the, the lagna becomes balahinam that means the the strength of the lagna can get a bit weaker so this person is likely to have some kind of the health problem or the other every now and then okay and that that's you see if you are only seeing classical astrology you will not know that they will always say oh jupiter in the ninth house this person is very strong and all that but actually it may not be the case so this person may have some kind of uh, ailments in the body all the time and then she will get some kind of a rescue uh, with the grace of the god okay that is the thing next we have to start our um, uh, hierarchy of planets i'm going to follow traditionally whatever uh, Uh, our uh, greenstone logo has put in his table of hierarchy of planets power hierarchy of planets 
So let's analyze the one which is Pluto, the biggest, mightiest of all planets according to him. So where is Pluto? Pluto being the lord of the 12th house goes and sits in 9th house. So there is a strong connection between 12th house and 9th house. This is a beautiful thing. I, I remember there is uh, this similar kind of thing that uh, comes to highly spiritual people like Ramakrishna Paramahams, for example. Okay, so the 12th house is always, it is a Vyayasthanam, of course, I know that. It's the house of um, foreign lands, distant journey lands and things like that. But the primary importance to be given for 12th house as it is the spiritual house. Okay, and for her, it is a Scorpio, which is a very transformative house here. And Pluto being the lord of that sits in the 12th house in what? Eagle Avatar. Right? Definitely, definitely, this woman will be very much um, connected to spirituality. She will be very much meant, wherever she is in, in her life, she will be pulled and dragged into the beautiful service to the Lord. Right? This is what we have to analyze. Now, what does Pluto do in the ninth house? And uh, it dominates all these remaining planets. Okay? Venus and Moon and Jupiter in red is all overshadowed with the power of Pluto because it's a very rare planet, right? It takes 250 years to come to the zodiac sign of Leo and that too in the eagle avatar. So this person will always be above the clouds, you know, how the eagle behaves. She will always think in a different way and she understands spirituality to the highest sense, okay? And by right, if other planets are unfavorable, this person must have settled in the foreign land for at least 10 to 15 years of her lifespan because 9,000 is long distance journey and 12,000 is of foreign lands, right? So that means this person should have gone to a foreign land and worked there or did some spiritual activity also in that land. But I'm not sure what has happened. Let's see the other, uh, other uh, uh, planetary arrangements, whether it is in favorable things or not. Okay, so Pluto is definitely a very, very positive, uh, very, very positive planet. That means the connection between her 12th to 9th, okay, I'm just going to write like this, 12 to 12-9 12 is extremely, extremely positive. So this person will be a very spiritual person and placement of Saturn and Rahu in the 12th house gives her a lot of problems in the, the first uh, 30, 35 years or even 40 years of life. She will go through a lot of ups and downs and um, she will have a lot of health problems related to Rahu in the 12th house. Okay, so anything uh, 12th Bhavam uh, of, a, of a particular house is always called Vyaya Bhavam. That means a house which is 12th to any house will bring the losses to that house. That means the Lagna is her body and herself, her personality. So Saturn and Rahu, the two um, negative planets placed in the 12th house will make her suffer a lot and she will have some bodily ailments every now and then. And even her feet, uh, I am very specifically talking about feet because 12th house represents our feet. So this person may have some problem related to the feet. She may have some pains every now and then and uh, she needs um, uh, you know, to get some treatments all the time. All right, so next part of analysis after Pluto will be planet X. So look at where is planet X here. Planet X goes to 6th house, which is the original house. So 6-6, six six, right? So 6-6 six six is the uh, 6th Lord placed in the 6th house, comes to her rescue. See, uh, irrespective of what planet it is, 6th house represents our day-to-day -day routine, it also represents certain diseases which are uh, very acute in nature. That means the disease comes and it gets cured within one or two weeks. Right? Uh, and then it also represents competition and competitors in the workplace and things like that. And uh, sixth house is also called Prarabdha Karma. Right? So whenever a planet stays in its own house, it will always protect the ascendant from all the ailments of that particular house, whatever it signifies. Okay, so what do I mean by that? Sixth Lord in the sixth house will protect this woman from many of the ailments that happens. And many times the enemies or the competitors themselves will provide support to her and she will be working in a place which has very repetitive kind of work. 
Sixth house means it's very repetitive. It will be more of a service kind of a orientation. So she will be in a service industry, sixth house, and she will make money in that. Right, sixth, wherever planet X sits, that is what is the source of income, according to Greenstone Lobo's concepts, right? So planet X sits in the sixth house of day-to-day -day routine operations, and she, has, she will be very good in her routines. And at some point of time, she must have worked for some organization which will give her job in some clerical and administrative type of a work. And she will take good name and fame from her bosses because she will be very faithful in her, uh, in her um, uh, duties. Okay, We can always see the 10th house for that uh, particular portion and looks like this has a very powerful sun in the Virgo, in the 10th house, right? So I'm connecting 6,000, 10,000 here now. I'm seeing a beautiful, very beautiful Mercury. So this person must be very good in accountancy. Mercury is all about calculations. And when it goes and sits in Virgo, along with uh, Surya, Surya represents the government sector, right? A person who has 10,000 Surya can work in a government sector in one way or the other. The, the person's job will be related to service towards the government. So if she can be working in some government organization, she can be uh, working in a government school or government bank or anything which needs uh, service. Even a, ho a hospital is doubtful because Chiron, I need to see Chiron. Chiron is uh, debilitated in the second house, so she may not be related to medical science. But planet Mercury being the seventh lord, okay, seventh house is the house of spouse also. So seventh Lord stays in the deep exaltation, according to Greenstone logo also. And uh, classical astrology also says that Mercury gets exalted in Kanya Rashi, right? So uh, at what degrees? Let us see the degree of Mercury here. It's about five degrees of Virgo. So it is considered as a, a exaltation point there. At, until zero to five degrees, we call it as exaltation point for Mercury. And 15 to the rest part of the 30 degrees, we call it as Mula Trikona Rashi for Mercury. So uh, this person should be very good in accountancy and calculation and a very repetitive type of job that uh, she might have done as a service in her career. That's what I can say. And uh, as I'm, I'm connecting here, uh, six Lord in six, I said, and then there is a connection between seven house and ten house. So please feel free to stop me if you have questions, sir. Okay. No. So I always yeah. encourage two-way discussions. <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, the, the doubts, if you keep it towards the end, we may forget what we have discussed. So you can stop me uh, uh, at any point of time. I am seeing a very strong connection between 7th and 10th. That's why I'm not going to the hierarchy. I'm directly giving the points here. So 7th Lord Mercury stays in 10th house. That means... There is a connection between her spouse and herself. So both of them will be in a similar kind of a sector, which is service sector, most probably. So there will, there will be some similarity in their work. It's not like husband is a businessman and a wife is uh, in the service sector. It's not like that. Definitely 7th house represents spouse or the, the living partner. And the 10th house represents our tolil. Tolil is the profession. Right. So both of them are connected in this case. So definitely the, the husband and wife will have similar kind of a, a repetitive task in their life. OK, that's it. that that makes them understand each other uh, much better. OK, and uh, it's a Shubha Graha. Mercury is considered as a as a good planet and uh, it's an intelligent planet. So definitely the spouse also will be equally intelligent, uh, to, uh, matching the intelligence of this man. Okay, now go back to the hierarchy again, whatever Greenstone logo given us, the next planet to be analyzed. So far, are we clear about planet X, sir? Do yeah. you have any questions? No. The source of income has been the sixth house of repetitive task. That's all in one line for planet X. Now, let's talk about Neptune in this person's chart. So what is Neptune doing? Neptune is the ruler of fourth house. Okay, fourth Lord Neptune goes to the deepest exaltation in Libra. Let us see what is the angle in which it is there. It is it, um, it is less than 10 degrees. Definitely, it's a very good uh, avatar for Neptune to be there. And this person is again spiritually linked personality. 
right? Fourth house is actually supposed to be a Sukha Bhavam. That means house of comforts, motherland, and all kinds of vehicles and properties. So the Lord of this fourth house sits in the incoming gains. That is very good. That is really good. And the incoming gains, finally, as the life progresses, will be also related to spirituality. Right? As I told you before, Neptune really is a very powerful planet which represents um, Lord Vishnu himself. You know, uh, if you talk about uh, Uranus, Neptune, Pluto, we can relate them or correlate them to the Trimurtis themselves. That means Brahma, Vishnu and Mahesh. Right? So the constructor, uh, the, the maintainer and the destroyer. So the maintainer Vishnu goes to the 11th house and it's a, it's a beautiful, beautiful position for Neptune to be there. And uh, the, the higher belief system will be very, very strong for this person as uh, she ages in life. Okay. So moving further, uh, any questions on linkage uh, between 4 and 11, sir? Yeah. In uh, Neptune, we are talking about a 4 11 connection. Yes, yes, yes. So, where does the, I mean, Neptune per se is connected with spirituality. That is understood. But yes. in a fourth connection, mm -hmm. how do we uh, bring in the concept of spirituality in a four level uh, connection? See, fourth house, originally we should call that as a very emotional house. It represents your mother. Okay. This person will get the samskara of spirituality from her mother also. So, you must understand fourth house is our mother. So, the ruler of the fourth house, wherever it sits, right, it, it shows roughly the indication of that mother and her nature itself. So, where is moon here for her? Moon is in the ninth house. So, she loves her mother very much. The connection between this person and the mother will be very high. And look at the moon. Moon is originally in the classical astrology, the ruler of Karkaraka Rashi or Cancer Zodiac sign. Being the ruler of Cancer Zodiac sign, it's a eighth house for this person. So she has learned a lot of uh, uh, knowledge, uh, which is uh, like a, not a normal knowledge. No, Eighth house represents occult sciences also. So it's a deep spirituality again. So the deeper aspect of spirituality, she got it from uh, her mother as a gift. Right? That's what I can say. So this person's mother must be a very, uh, very uh, nice personality. Uh, she can be like a guru for her. She has been a teacher because already Gajakesar Yoga is happening. Her mind, which is moon, right? And then Jupiter, both are linked. So in Sanskrit, our sages always say, Chandramam Manaso Jataha. So the, the controller of mind is moon, right? And that happens to go and close association of Jupiter means the person is always thinking good things in the life. Always. And that samskara has come from the fourth house as well to this person. So that's very good. Okay. So that's what I wanted to talk about. 411 combination. Okay. According to the next hierarchy after Neptune, we should look at Uranus. Uranus is the lord of the third house. Okay. This is the third house for this person. The third lord Uranus goes and sits in uh, the eighth house. Okay, so there is a linkage between 8 and 3 and it's a black Uranus. That means it's a neutral Uranus. So third house means what? Third house is the hard work, the efforts that we put. It also represents younger siblings. Okay, so younger siblings going to 8th house is not going to give very good relation with siblings. So there will be some kind of friction or the other between herself and her siblings. They may not have, they may not be in sync. Right? They may not have that synchronous thoughts. So they may live in a different place, for example, and they may not um, support each other much. Okay, Of course, this person will have a elder brother, if I am not mistaken, because Mars is also called Karaka or Bratratva. Bratratva means the, the brotherhood. So fifth lord in the third house can give her a brother who can be a very nice person and a bit short-tempered person also. But definitely there will be some kind of a friction or the other between the, the, the co-bonds, okay? Especially the younger ones if she has uh, anyone, okay? You can always check back. I'm not sure whether she has the younger siblings or not. But definitely a brother will be there for this woman in her life. Uh, that's what I'm seeing the Mars. And let's see what is the angle in which 
the Mars is there. Mars is at 20 degrees. It is just matured, you know. So please understand, any uh, in the span of 0 to 30 degree of any house, 0 to 10 is called Bhalya Avastha. And 10 to 20 is called Yuva Avastha. And uh, 20 to 30 is called Murita Avastha. So whenever the planet happens to be in that slot of 10 to 20 degrees, it gives a lot of uh, uh, energy to the planet to work. Okay, so and even if Lagna happens to be within the 10 to 20 degrees, the person will have a lot of active life in their uh, life. You know, this person will be courageous, no doubt about it. Mars gives her courage. She works hard. She never gives up. Even in case of any kind of um, sadness also, she will have some kind of a motivation to trigger herself and keeps moving. Okay, that's what I can see here. So Mars in the third house, third Lord Jupiter, uh, sorry, Uranus goes to eighth house. So it is frictionless relation with siblings and courage, self-courage, self-motivation drives this person in her life. That's what I can say. Any questions on three to eight combination? Fine. So we are in sync with that. Next, let's go to planet Z, which is very important. Okay, the man mother or the one which gives attraction in ourselves, right? So we get attracted by uh, uh, to others through planet Z. So planet Z is the lord of ninth house for this person. And where is planet Z? Planet Z goes to the fourth house. This is beautiful combination, right? So there is a connection between four and nine. And uh, please understand, according to classical astrology, Whenever there is a connection between 4th house and 9th house, 4th house is called quadrant or Kendra Sthana and 9th house is Trikona Sthana, Bhagya Adipati. So whenever there is a connection between the two, this forms a kind of Raja Yoga. Raja Yoga means, uh, see, uh, don't imagine that Raja Yoga means this person will be having a palace and uh, will live the life of a queen or something like that. No. but. In her own scale, according to her karmic uh, fruits that she's having, she will definitely have a good house to live with it. And then she will not have any problem for food and day-to-day -day, uh, routine activities, for sure. That's what this, this kind of Raja Yoga is going to bring for this person. And planet Z in the fourth house, again, you can see that uh, the father of this person, ninth house represents father. Father of this person is also a very... Uh, benevolent personality okay so this person would have gone through a lot of ups and downs because of pluto there pluto is always make and break even though it's eagle avatar initially she the father must have gone through a lot of ups and downs but but i can confidently tell you the father of this person is also a very benevolent personality he has done a lot of good things to the society and he has taken very good name and fame and that can be double endorsed with the presence of surya in the 10th house. 10th house, whenever the, the person is born, the sun would have been in the highest position and it's afternoon, midday, right? In the midday, everybody knows there is sun, correct? It's going to be hot and bright sun. In the same way, the father of this uh, uh, this spouse, this, this uh, lady, also must have been a very benevolent personality, right? So, 9th house is father, 4th house is mother, both are connected. And it's a, it's a good parents. This person is born to a very good parents, and both of the persons are spiritually oriented also. Right? Yeah, I have a point here. Yes, please. Planet Z is also deeply exalted at twenty three point yes. five two. Uh, what is the angle there? It is about twenty three point five two. Very close to twenty five. Which is a deep exaltation. Deep exaltation, yes. Just uh, around 1 to 1.5 degree difference. In, yes. in, in, Pis in Pisces. Correct. Pisces is what? It is the. It is also a very deeply spiritual uh, uh, sign. And this person may attain a moksham also. That's what it is indicating. Right? So she gets into... Uh, okay, if we run out of time, we will again connect back. Okay? So what I am saying here is this. Uh, the connection of um, the planet 9, which is our higher belief system, coming into a deeply exalted position in a highly spiritual sign also indicates that this person can have some sakshat kara of uh, higher uh, consciousness. So she will go into, if we teach this person meditation and all that, it gets easy, easy for this person to learn. Okay, so 
there, there is a very uh, very strong point of Z being there, and she can be a famous person also because of this. And even her mother, fourth house, mother also may be famous for the spiritual works that they may be doing in the society. Right? Is that making sense here? Yeah. So it indicates. Uh, deep spirituality certainly certain certain and this is not a normal one it's not just bhagwan bhagwan ki ghar gaya aur na, namaskar kar liya aur bahar aa it's not that type of a normal type of prayers it is the by heart the person is going to uh, treat the lord as though it's a living entity around the person and she can feel that we call it as abhas in hindi right she can have ahsas of the lord she can feel the presence of the the positive nature of the the universal consciousness who is krishna himself okay that's that's the point here so four nine combination happens to be an x uh, one more thing i have so we spoke about the husband last time and said his deep spiritual and spirituality is on the way to liberation because of the pluto being in the 12th house etc etc correct so combination wise spouse is also in the same line she is very much in the similar lines and uh, she is paying towards liberation yes why i am saying this because her 12th lord is exalted number 1 and number 2 she is made to suffer a lot in this birth because of two evil planets in the 12th house right that means she should have suffered a lot in life it's uh, she will have a lot of shocks in her life she will go through a lot of ups and downs and she has seen that so one who who is going to do uh, who is going to face all the problems in life the person who is in the accelerated mode of clearing all the bad debts of the past lives right so there there is an accelerated so that is why whenever we we get into trouble we should not scold god are bhagwan enna panite why why are you doing this to me you should not blame god we must always take it in a positive way thinking that you are paying back for all the bad deeds that you might have done and forgotten and you died in that the death of that particular life and you have taken rebirth uh, and our memory is so short term that we will not remember all those things but the lord remembers and he is going to give you uh, such a life that you go through all this and pay back everything and you become very clear and clean crystal clear and you are ready to go to the the higher uh, realm that's what we have to interpret so am i making sense here so from that point of view it matches with the husband's finality of this oh yes, yes 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 i have absolutely no doubt about it absolutely no doubt about it all right so that's the yeah. point uh, we need to see the next one is in the hierarchy is planet y vishvakarma the day to day routine activities that we do happens to be her 10th lord okay there is going to be a connection between 10th lord and lagna it goes and sits in the lagna itself so she is very much related to her karmic deed she is believer of doing karma so she is never a lazy person okay she always works hard especially we can see the 6th house 6th lord in the 6th house shows that she is very good in routine she never get tired and bored of doing routine and jobs every now and then okay and uh, it gets into debilitation point here the 10th lord uh, he, she may not make money out of the services and karma that she is going to do because it is in the debilitation point here in sagittarius okay so uh, what we can conclude here is that the lagna has 10th lord so she has lot of over burden of karmic things she thinks i have to do so many work in my life and she always executes it and she may not be benefited from that in terms of monetary benefits right lagna is what lagna is our body it's a temporary uh, vadige veedu in tamil we call it as vadige veedu it's like a, a rental house that the god has given to us to fulfill our, all our karmic duties so in that vadige veedu you may not get all the physical pleasures in this birth for this woman okay so 10th lord sitting in the first house and in the debilitation point says that she will only get 50% benefits from her vishvakarma right so what is that it means it means that she has to keep on doing her work she may not gain money or anything through that work that she is doing that means she is going to work for some at the later stage of her life work for a non profit organization you get my points non profit organization 
and she feels very happy working there. Her soul, her soul's purpose is that ten thousand is what? It's our karma. We have taken this uh, temporary body from the Lord, given by the Lord, for doing certain karmic activities, and that karmic activity is going to give no money for this person in terms of monetary benefits. There won't be any monetary benefits, but. Still, she will continue to do it because that is her soul's journey. Why? Because in our classical astrology, we say wherever Surya, Sun sits in our horoscope, that becomes our soul's journey. Right? Ten thousand Sun shows that this person is very karma yogi. She keeps working and working and working always, and there is no laziness for this person. And whatever she does, she does it with the uh, with the higher uh, octane. Uh, of spirituality towards the God, and she may not benefit materially through this work that she may be doing, but her spiritual account keeps going up. That's what we should say by seeing the connection between tenth house and lagna or the ascendant. All right, so that's about it uh, for uh, planet Y. Vishwakarma gets debilitated in her chart. Let's go to Chiron. What is happening to Chiron for her? So Chiron is actually the eighth lord, and it sits in the second house, and it aspects its own house. Sitting in the second house, it aspects its own house of eighth house. What does it mean? And it itself, its status is negative. It's red. Please understand, eighth house is all about inheritance. It is other people's money. By the death of a person, you may get that money. Okay, any sudden money, sudden events, and all that. That means, if eighth lord is debilitated in the second house, it shows that she may not get much inherited property money from her parents. Maybe her brother is going to take away that one. It's possible. So this person may not receive much things from the in-laws as well. See, the eighth house is what? Eighth house is the gain of seventh house. Seventh house is the marriage. Eighth house is the gain of that marriage. So the gain of that marriage is Chiron, who is the ruler of that, and he sits in the second house. What is the angle? The angle in which the Chiron is being seated is thirteen degrees. It is definitely in the Yuva Avastha, and it is negative Chiron for this person. So eighth lord in the second house, looking into the eighth house, shows that. Inheritance may not come to the, through the through the death of their parents-in-law as well as parents. Okay, so and then is there any positivity in this? Because Chiron is also a bumi karakatwa, so Chiron gives properties. Okay, so it is the one which gives you a lot of landed properties and comforts and things like that. So she may lack that one uh, in this present life. Okay. So that's what is the connection between eighth lord and second lord. But, but good point also is there because eighth house represents our ayu. Okay, it also represents sudden death and all that. So it delays. The planet who is the owner of that is directly aspecting that ayasthana will make her to live longer. Okay, so there is there is nothing called. Uh, see, whenever we go to Indian temples, normally we Hindus. When we go to the temple, they will always give what is known as tirtham, right? They will give a holy water which is soaked with tulsi and pachcha karpuram and all that. So whenever the the priest of the temple offers that uh, holy water to the, the 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 devotees, he will always say certain uh, shloka. Okay, in one of that it says vaidyo narayano harihi akalam rukyu haranam and all that. What is that akalam rukyu? A column rupee is something like uh, there is a tsunami happening and you happen to be there and you die, or there is an airplane that you take and you are flying and unfortunately something happens to the engine of the airplane and the death happens. Those are called a column rupees. Uh, what what uh, the conclusion that you can say is there is a combination of eight and two here, and this will prevent the a column rupee for this person. Am I making sense here, sir? Hello. So there is a combination of eighth, eighth house and second house. Uh, let me share the screen here. Okay. So this this is what we are experiencing that 
the lord of that akalam mrityu he is aspecting that how whenever the owner of that house looks into that house he will not actually spoil that house for good right so we will not spoil our own house right if uh, we look we are watching our own house we will not let other person to stone throw the stone at our house is it a simple analogy in the same way the planets are living entities please understand that and chiron is going to protect the the person's ayu and it's going to delay the death that also so she will she will have a lot of chances to accomplish the certain karmic uh, duties and backlogs from all her past lives so that's a good thing also i always see positive things in every aspect all right so we saw the chiron now the next one that we need to look in after that is whether she has the full moon or a new moon definitely we didn't see that we can see that sun is uh, in the kanya rashi uh, or the virgo and moon is in simham so definitely after a while maybe after one one and a half days perhaps the amavasya would have come or the new moon would have happened but she missed that so she is born on a chaturdashi perhaps always please understand whenever the sun and moon comes to the same house we say it's a new moon day and they are exactly opposite to each other 180 degree opposite to each other we call it as purnima or the full moon day so uh, this point need not to be discussed point number 8 is not applicable to this horoscope all right so next is saturn this is the classical astrology planet which uh, we need to analyze and let us see where is saturn saturn is the lord of second house capricorn is ruled by saturn second lord saturn sits in the 12th house of vim where means expense right so this also should have if that were to be a positive saturn that means if it were to be a green saturn she would have even gone to foreign lands for earning her money because second house represents earnings money 12th house is losses and again on a positive note it is representing the foreign countries okay so there is a strong connection between 2 and 12 but unfortunately it's a debilitated saturn who is already corrupted with uh, that rahu there so this would have prevented her from moving out of the motherland for good yeah that's that's where uh, uh, the, the the foreign journeys would have been prevented but uh, saturn in the 12th house gives her a lot of losses that means she's she earns she spends she earns she spends so she may not have a very uh, long accumulated uh, money uh, she may live a, a, an ordinary middle class and slightly upper middle class life she may not go to the high class richness because the second lord gets debilitated in the 12th house so that means this person is very rich in her spiritual account and uh, it may be an average and slightly above average in terms of uh, uh, the the monetary benefits in her uh, physical bank account so called <laughs> our man created the uh, uh, bank account okay but her spiritual account is is really very very high all right so combination of 2 and 12 makes her spend a lot of money what she earns and no much savings in in terms of uh, you know big big amounts it may not be in lakhs and it may be a few couple of lakhs or few lakhs but it may not go into crores i'm talking about indian rupees right so that is the point here purely second house is all about money money accumulated savings and all the things that she values so definitely she is going to spend off her savings in one way or the other and she she also doesn't believe in accumulating a lot of money there already all right so that is the saturn's position and now where is saturn for her in the gocharam that means in the transit so moon is right there and it goes to her 6th house so she is going through a lot of ups and downs with saturn right now so some health issues may be coming every now and then and it may be related to that you know uh, why i am saying this because the saturn was uh, was there in her 7th um, uh, house okay in aquarius and it has uh, now come back to her 6th uh, uh, house so there is a lot of ups and downs going on uh in terms of uh, saturn's uh, gochara palam or the transit results all right so after this she is going to have what is known as astama shani the saturn is going to go to her eighth house and uh, so there will be some kind of uh, health problems that can be expected in 3 years from now okay due to astama shani 
is uh, she's going to have some kind of a uh, Saturn goes to eighth house. Definitely, she's going to have what is known as um, some surgical interference that may be required to to get rid of the uh, the ailments or medical conditions that she may have. All right. So that is about um, the Saturn transit and also the second lord placed in the twelfth house. Now. The next one in the hierarchy of list is Jupiter. Okay, Guru Bhagwan. That happens to be her Lagna Lord placed in the ninth house. So this is a good placement in terms of directional strength for Jupiter. It, it becomes very strong in the ninth house in terms of uh, the house placement. But as uh, as the Leo zodiac sign itself, it gets debilitated. So that means <clears throat> normally people always look for their bhagyam, right? Luck. So how is the bhagyam or luck for this uh, woman? So she gets things, whether she wants or not, in terms of material benefits. But uh, she may not be really behind that, right? So she do, she wants a luck uh, in a different way, but she won't get that in this life. Whatever she wants in terms of material benefits. So she will not get exactly what she wants. So that means her bhagyam is a bit weak. But but finally, her final destiny will be open for her because of this lack of luck. Okay. Sometimes this person may complain that she doesn't have luck. Okay. And all that complaint, finally she will realize why this is happening to her. Perhaps as she gets older. Now, how old is this person? In 1956, she is already uh, quite a old, old senior person, right? So, she would have realized by now that uh, certain things did not play. The luck did not play a role in her life. And then, now she is slowly understanding why that she had certain problems in her life. Okay? That's what you need to understand. Now, uh, any questions on one nine combination? No. It's pretty clear. So, yeah. uh, the yeah. next one is Surya or the Sun. It happens to be a very good planet for her. In my opinion, all the good inherit inheritance in the sense, the good qualities she has taken from her father, even she may uh, kind of look like her father also. Okay? In terms of appearance, you know, in terms of nature, uh, the, the first look you can say that, oh, this this girl is the daughter of this uh, this man. Uh, that resemblance uh, will come because there is a gain of 9th house to the 10th house. That means in classical astrology, we consider Surya as the ruler of Leo. And uh, being the uh, place, being placed in the second house from that house itself, it gives a lot of brightness in the face of this person and she will resemble the father. And Surya represents father straight away. And uh, placement of that in the 10th house really gives her some government job. Definitely, this woman must have worked for some government sector and saved some money during her uh, uh, service for uh, for the nation, right? So, she would have done some job in government work related to government. She must have taken government salary for sure, without a shadow of doubt. Okay, so Surya is really well placed and it also aspects the 4th house of mother. She, she must have even helped her mother with the salary that she must have earned. You know, that's that's what I can say here. And um, she must have taken care of the parents in, in a respectful way, for sure. But they may not live together for too long, but uh, I'm very sure the relationship between the, 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 the this woman and her parents must have been very good. Okay, they understand this very well. The next one is Mars. This is very important. Fifth house. Fifth house is the house of children, right? The su who is there here? Let me. Sometimes I cannot write. Okay. So uh, here. So this is the fifth house. The ruler of Aries is Mars. And it happens to go and sit in the third house of a lot of efforts. So to get this child, there must have been a lot of, lot of efforts. And look at the fifth house who is aspecting the highly spiritual planet. Neptune is aspecting the fifth house. That means in the uh, she must have really given birth to. Uh, it should be basically a boy because the fifth house is male. Mars is a male. She should have actually had uh, the first child, which is very delayed one, as a boy. I don't know. She might have got this as um, 
I don't know, there could be an abortion because the Mars is also is a, a blood red planet, we call it, right? So there could have been something happened. Uh, there could There is a possibility of a miscarriage uh, in the first place or there must be uh, some problem in uh, in getting uh, the first child for sure for this person because fifth house is not smooth. There is a uh, there is a drishti of Guru Jupiter there. So Jupiter throws its ninth aspect, and that means the two powerful planets in terms of spirituality, that is Neptune and Jupiter, directly aspects the fifth house. Okay, so this gives a very good child, very, very good child, the fifth house combination with the, uh, with the third house. And aspect for this is uh, coming from the fourth lord, that is uh, Neptune and also the Lagna lord. Okay, four and one lords look into the fifth house of children. That means there must have been a very, very good child for this person. And... Uh, Neptune being a, a Mayavi planet, there could be some kind of an illusion that must have happened for this child. Okay, that's all I can say. And, um, and something must have happened to this, uh, this child and uh, it must be very, very brilliant in education. Okay, learning and other things, uh, if you see, it would be really very good, okay? And uh, to understand in a little bit more deeper concept of uh, fifth house, I would like to put this data in what is known as Saptamamsha Kundali. Okay, that's what we do in Jagannath Hora. So I'm going to key in this data again. Can, can you just tell me her date of birth again? It's October something, right? October 10th. 1st October 1956. 1956. And then uh, the time is something like afternoon, 13 something. What uh, is 13.25. 13.25 you are seeing there. Okay, excellent. So let's put one second. And this is uh, female. Okay, she is not born in Singapore. She is born in Mumbai. And she is born in India. Okay, so with this combination, of course, this is Bhava Chalita Kundali. Okay, and uh, it didn't change much. All the planets are in the same place. Okay, what I'm going to do, I'm going to add D7 chart here, Saptamamsha Kundali. So, Saptamamsha, if this time of birth and all is accurate, we will uh, have to look into D7 chart. D7 is a, is a sub chart or um, a divisional chart that talks about her relationship with the children. Okay, so the Lagna for this ascendant is Nisham, that is Aries. And fifth Lord is female, you see, Venus. So she must have given birth to a beautiful female uh, daughter. Okay, that's what it shows. And what is the relation? Is there a sukham? Is there a happiness from this uh, child? How to see that? That should be seen from the fourth house. Sukhasthanam in the Saptamam Shakundli. This is actually not the uh, chart of the ch child itself. It is the relationship between the child to this woman. Uh, am I clear or did you get confused? You are looking very... <clears throat> yeah, the concepts are a little bit of hearing. Okay, okay. So please understand, the fourth house is always the house of Sukham, happiness. Okay, and this is the chart that uh, we always put in our classical astrology. We say, how is the relation between children and the uh, the, the, the Jataka, Jataka of the person, right? So for, for this person, the fourth house happens to be a Cancer Zodiac sign and the ruler of that goes to sixth house, okay? So the Sukham from this person, sixth house is a house of uh, problems, okay? Competition, enemies, and some kind of a trouble, okay? So fourth lord goes and sits in the sixth house for Saptamamsha Kundali chart. That must have given rise to certain problems for the child of this uh, woman. And that's all I want to say here. Okay. Uh, is there a happiness overall? Yes, it would have been a happy situation. It's like a mother. She is like a mother. The, the, the daughter behaves like the mother for this lady. You know, because 4000 is all about uh, our emotional part. And then, according to classical astrology, again, it is ruled by moon. And moon is who? Moon is our mother, right? So the, the child would have behaved as, as though it's the mother of this uh, lady. 
in one way or the other in terms of knowledge and in terms of emotional well beings and things like that but uh, it is the, the sukham of this chart goes and sits in these six thousand of problems all right so just take note that uh, there could have been some some ailment for this particular uh, relationship between the daughter and the and this uh, lady uh, so called spouse okay just take note of it and there may not be long term happiness whenever there is jupiter uh, sorry uh, fourth house of saptamamsha kundli has mars it gives long term relationship with the children and they will be fully taken care even on their death bed when mars is there in the fourth house or aspect in the fourth house they will get long term sukham from the children they, until they go to the grave the, the children are going to take care for that person so unfortunately that yogam is not there for this woman okay so i will i will stop it there for the fifth house aspect okay is there any question before i go to the next one no excellent excellent so after the mars we analyze venus mercury and moon quickly so that uh, these are smaller uh, octane planets they go faster around the sun especially moon goes very fast okay so let's analyze venus here venus happens to be uh, sorry where is that i am writing it's here so venus happens to be in the 8th house sorry 9th house here and here it is showing 8th house why is it 7th and 9 it is the combination of the 11 and 9 where did i see the oh okay yes even in classical astrology it's the same sorry so it is the combination of uh, 11th house sorry i am opening something else here <laughs> okay 11 combination nine, of uh, 11th house and the 9th house you are right my friend so the 11th lord sits in the 9th house of higher belief system so what does that indicate is it green it is not green is it red it's not red it's it's neutral so 11th house is incoming gains and 9th house is luck so uh, definitely definitely this gives this person a life which is above average but not a super rich personality right so she will be uh, living a middle class life and slightly higher than that and not more than that because venus is the is the is the giver of everything in the 9th house okay it should give uh, whenever we see 9th house winners the person will be over lucky and they will really really have lot of richness in their life because bhagyatala shukran that's what we say in tamil right so for this person even it is going to be more better because 11th house of incoming gains is sitting in the bhagyam uh, and is this a friendly house is this an enemy house and anybody aspecting mars is aspecting mars is having a direct aspect on this venus that shows that uh, there is a strong bondage between her and her spouse her husband right mars represents the male and female is uh, venus and there should be a lot of love between the husband and wife and this could be very very likely the combination of a love marriage very high chances because mars is the main uh, the, the masculine part of uh, the the planets and uh, venus is the feminine when they aspect each other let's see the angles also the angle is just 1 degree for uh, uh, for venus whereas in mars mars it's 20 degrees so mars is more mature the, the husband is more mature in terms of uh, uh, proposals and things like that it could have been a kind of arranged marriage but it turned out to be a very uh, uh, a, a lovable couple i can say in terms of they have a very extraordinary kind of an affection as mars happens to aspect the venus okay fifth lord aspecting the 11th lord which is also a very good uh, yogam by itself okay so they will have a good understanding between uh, the pair, uh, between the husband and wife we will do a match making part I, i i will also open that particular chart here but definitely you can see that the placement of venus is is an excellent combination uh, for uh, for this per person chart in the 9th house so they will be a very strong devotee of a, a feminine goddess for example durga devi and things like that ninth house lakshmi is there so this person will be a very strong devotee of a of a feminine goddess also you get my point the the belief system will be very strong on that goddess and she takes a lot of blessings from that uh, feminine goddess as well 
in the form of Shakti, Swar Shakti Swarupa. All right. So that is the point for uh, this case. And let's go to the next one, uh, which is Moon. Okay. Moon and um, combination of Moon and uh, Sun. Okay. So Moon happens to be also in the ninth house of higher belief system. So she believes whatever her mother says, you know. So Veda Vakyam, we say, right? Whatever mother says, she must have really followed her uh, her mother's wordings in her childhood. And also, as, um, as I, I, I'm not sure whether her mother is still alive, but definitely she should have taken the advice of her mother very seriously. And uh, the belief system shows that mother is there in the ninth house and she always believes her, uh, her practices and she copies her uh, spiritual practices even now as well. Okay. So that's what it is. And ninth house uh, will give uh, in future. Uh, oh, okay. Let's talk about journeys. Ninth house is also supposed to be a long distance pilgrimage journeys and all that. But look at the position of moon. It's there in the Simharashi, which is an RP sign. So I already explained to you in the previous video that uh, there is a fiery sign, there is an RP sign, and there is an airy sign and watery sign. So movable signs are those fiery signs and then the watery sign. So if it happens to be a Karkataka Rashi or the Cancer Zodiac sign, it will make the person to move if that happens to be the ninth house. But whereas here, the ninth house of long distance journeys comes to a Arti sign which is fixed, it doesn't move. So maybe they are very much related to the motherland and all the pilgrimages will happen in and around the same country of residence. They may not go to a foreign land or they may not go for a very long distance journeys. You get my point? So that's what it is. And um, yeah, that covers all the planets. That covers all the planets. Uh, so you want to add any point here? Yeah. A few things. Uh, number one, when I compared the horoscope of the husband and the wife, I found that in all the outer planets, from Saturn onwards up to Pluto, excellent. They are in the same zodiac sign. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It happens to be 1956 born. Uh, I forgot the. I think December. It must be December 15th for the spouse uh, for for the husband, if I am not mistaken. Yeah. So obviously, outer planets will be in the same uh, zone because they are very slow in movement. Yeah. Yes. Yes. That's a very good observation. Yeah, you are doing the good good points here. And uh, second point: Is there any significance of a conjunction of Mercury and Sun in the tenth house? Oh yes, yes. That is uh, that is called Buddha Aditya Yogam in Sanskrit. Buddha is Buddhan, Mercury and Adit. That's why I told you. She does the work using her heart. With heart, she does anything. That right? she will not just uh, do it for the sake of doing. We say in uh, in in uh, in Canada, we call it as achukattu. Means whatever she does, she does it in a very beautiful way, right? If you go to this person's kitchen, it will be very clean. It may not have sophisticated things, but whatever is there, it will be very clean and perfect. Everything, a place for everything, everything in its place, and things like that. So presence of mind will be always there for this person when she is working. Very organized person. So that is one point which struck me, that conjunction of uh, Mercury and Sun. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, so if I just... Uh, if you look at it in a summary form, Mm -hmm. There is a blend of both husband and wife for spiritual pursuits. Oh, yes, 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 yes. I mean, now I'm looking at it at a very macro level. Yeah, in a macro level, you can always uh, see the deep connection between 12 and 9, which is the higher octane planet, the Pluto. So definitely, connection is very strong. And in the husband chart, if I remember correctly, he's born in Kanya Lagnam or the Virgo Ascendant. And 12th Lord is connected to the third of self-efforts. So the, the husband will make a lot of self-efforts to motivate himself to spirituality. Whereas uh, spirituality for this woman comes naturally at the loss of something. 12,000 is loss of something very, very valuable. 
once that loss happens she will get completely uh, she will surrender herself to the spirituality yes this is a common factor so, so the destination appears to be the same for both yeah looks like both have taken the same airplane ticket to <laughs> one destination <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. I was saying that the husband was moving on the path of liberation, moksha. Yes. Uh, how would you comment for the... Yeah, that, 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 that's what. See, the last zodiac sign is always the 12th zodiac sign. And whenever there is a very strong connection between the 12th and 9th, and that shows that her destiny, 12th house is Bhagyam or the destiny, the destiny is connected with the spirituality. that's one line good enough to summarize this chart itself because the higher highest octane planet is pluto 12th yeah. floor in the 9th house is spirituality is the destiny of this woman in Which a means, uh, pluto in its eagle avatar in the eagle avatar what it happens was, uh, was, uh, yeah remember what yeah. pluto is it's once in 250 years this type of a life is possible so and that happens to be the last birth for this woman so pluto in the eagle avatar was 312 for the husband and 129 for the wife for the wife yes yes in leo in leo in leo itself correct excellent so that's a that beautiful is the, uh, that is the uh, final statement uh, as a summary for both the charts yeah. from the point of view of spirituality yes yes i think uh, there are more spiritual partners than the physical uh, uh, thing in my opinion okay as you uh, are talking i made a quick uh, uh, vedic analogy uh, vedic astrology analogy for the husband and wife as the match making point so i've got a summary here we call this as guna match making table okay so there are so many points that we will collect and we call them and group them in this form and the maximum points that a husband and wife can score is 36 uh, and these are all related to mrutyu loka that means whatever we are going to enjoy in the mundane practical world okay that's what it is so varna vashya tarabalam yoni kutam graha maitram all these things gana so there, there there is always a combination sometimes this woman can be short tempered i said and that's what is the gana the rakshasa gana for this woman and that is where only the point is zero they have scored zero out of six sometimes she can be a little bit hot tempered because she is born in a fiery ascendant of sagittarius she can sweat a lot she gets hot very fast she always needs cooling her body will be always warm and uh, she gets short temperament very fast and the husband is very cool personality right so there is a disagreement here in in the physical life and then even in terms of rashi they have scored zero out of seven seven was maximum so the the two rashis do not match that means they are not here just as normal physical partners in in the mundane world but they are spiritual partners okay that's why even though 18 is the minimum points that you need to score for match making and they have just passed so that they stay on the same uh, route for sure <laughs> as a husband and wife but they may have they may have they may agree to disagree on many points you get my point i'm saying the very uh, uh, nice statement here they may agree to disagree on certain ideas between each other but still they will not fight the woman gets angry on some points of this man of this husband but at the end of the day still we are going to get some benefit from this that is spiritual right so that's what it is and then even if you talk about uh, other kutas so out of four kutas the rajju kuta mahendra kuta stri dirga and veerha out of that only two is qualifying four of uh, two out of four 50% it passes on the two tas as well the rajukuta is matching but whereas mahindra and vedha is different for both of them so that means they did not practically speaking let me be very frank they may not have a very a strong sexual life for long period of time okay so they may uh, they may not believe in that as they lose interest uh, in uh, in long term okay but 
but they have other tasks to accomplish together and that's the reason why they came together as pluto is 250 years once maybe these two souls came together after 250 years of waiting and things like that so you can relate they waited for this birth for 250 years perhaps the previous birth would have been these are all my uh, uh, my points, my viewpoints, you cannot have any textbook which tells you that, okay, this soul waited for two, 250 years. If you ask me a book, I may not have that. These are all my intuitional things that comes uh, to me after practicing Vedic astrology for many years, right? So that's what it is. And um, marriage compatibility is slightly above. And then Manglik Dosha is present in the chart of the boy, but it is cancelled due to the auspicious position of the planet. The girl is Manglik. They say that match is not favorable. The Mangal Dosha says there is going to be some kind of arguments, heat and arguments here and there. So uh, most probably this must have been a love marriage in a, in a way uh, as, uh, as uh, if there is a, a proper analysis that is done for both husband and wife, they would have not uh, uh, gone for this marriage in a way. That's what I'm seeing in a different perspective. But uh, it's too too late to talk about uh, Manglik Dosha now because all this would have uh, exhausted its its results. Definitely, there would have been some heated arguments every now and then in the initial stage of marriage and as the marriage progressed. Of course, every husband and wife will have, but this one is slightly stronger because the girl is Manglik. The girl has Mangal Dosha and things like yeah, that. Yeah, so uh, I have a point but there's no Manglik, no, because the Mars is in the third house. Uh, but this is from the moon. They consider moon sign. Chandra Rashi. Yeah, straight away as far as the moon. Yes, yes, yes. He says... Uh, Everything you know, comes from ascendant for him. Because ascendant represents the Bhumi in the horoscope. It represents the earth. See, we are talking about so many Navagrahas and so many other bodies and all that. We live in planet earth. Where is planet earth? Planet Earth is your ascendant, basically, <laughs> right? So none of the astrologers openly talk about planet Earth as the ascendant. I am very confidently in my videos, I make this point very clear to all our viewers. Planet Earth is nothing but the ascendant itself because you are looking at the position of that piece of land in which the person is born in the background of a particular zodiac sign, right? That means whatever is there in the eastern horizon of Earth, that uh, zodiac sign becomes the lagna. That means what? It's the position of earth in the background of that particular Rashi. So that means to say lagna uh, Kuja dosha is not there or the Manglik dosha is not there, but Chandra dosha must have existed in her mind. So physically she may not be scolding or uh, fighting with the husband, but mentally she will have that uh, thing that uh, differences of opinions will be there for sure. That's how we can make a conclusion. All right. So physical matchmaking, it says just above average and spiritual matchmaking is very, very deep, deeply connected as the age progresses for these two prospective couple and not prospective. They're already couple. <laughs> all right. So that's all is uh, the analysis for tonight. And um, I'm very sure that we shared a lot of things for our viewers tonight and uh, we try to cover the points in a, a greater detail. And I hope this uh, video uh, opens up a lot of uh, good points for our viewers. And uh, we encourage a lot of questions from you guys. If you have not understood any part of the video, please put it up in the comment section. I will be very glad to answer you whenever I have free time. Okay. So if uh, we have covered all the points, so with your blessings, uh, Hare Krishna, let's stop this video here and uh, have a nice, Evening, sir. Goodbye. Bye bye.